Good morning. Today is the 10th of July and this is part two of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2022 BMC Leyland Show here at uh, the British Motor Museum at Gaydon in Warwickshire. So in part one we um, sort of barely touched the service really, it's the way it goes on this channel I'm afraid. But uh, part two we've ended up on the Daimler Lanchester BSA stand and they're celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Daimler V8 saloon, also known as the Daimler V8 250. This will be quite an early one, it's on a, on a pre-suffix plate, um, KV, so possibly actually made um, as a, a press car for Jaguar and Daimler at the time. Um, Jaguar bought Daimler in 1960. So that's, um, that's, actually a, uh, that's actually a late 63 model. But I think we might be even able to have a look inside. Could I, do you mind if I have a look through the window? Oh, by all means. Thank you yeah. very much. That is absolutely, utterly beautiful. That is lovely. Upholstery needs a bit of work, but uh, for a 58 year old, it's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. Look at that. So, this is a. Uh, this is the there we 1964 go. 1964 Daimler V8. Yeah, there we go. So, it's, um, so it was uh, bought from the dealership in Coventry in 64. Uh, yes, in 1964 it was. Yeah. yeah. Ported, uh, so we take a look at the, um, this is the v Edward Turner designed this engine, it's a two and a half litre V8. There we go. Fit it into the um, sort of structure of a Jaguar Mark II. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you. Daimler SP250 Dart, um, they were made I think it's 59 to 64. But because Jaguar had their, their own car, and this segment already way underway with the E-Type, they decided they would discontinue them. I think the panels are fiberglass. I'm not going to actually knock and touch it because it's really a bad idea at a show like this to do that. Another um, Daimler car, oh, they're independent. This might have, been, this might have actually been made under the Docker uh, era. Lady Docker was quite extravagant person, look her up on Wikipedia. Um, she and her husband actually owned the company at the time. This, this isn't one of the special ones made for her, I don't think, but this is the same era that she would have been in charge. And um, yeah, it looks like it's a sort of state limousine or something, doesn't it? And of course, they used to make them at the time. Another dart here. This is exactly the colour scheme. Dark blue, beige leather interior with wood steering. What is that a leather dashboard as well? Oh, yes, viewers. Many, many, many tasty treats today, and we're only on part two. Another one of these um, Daimler V8 saloons. It's a '66. Yes, lots, lots more wood. I don't think I've ever seen so many Daimler SP250 darts um, together, but here we are. This is a 63. As I was saying in part one, it wasn't given at all that your car would have a, a suffix registration um, if it was after 1962. Some local authorities stayed with the pre-suffix ones like this rather than, you know, uh, adding a B on the end of it, or in this case an A because it's 63. Um, they stayed with that system until I think early 65 in some cases. This one's had some modification on the front. I don't know quite what's going on here. God, it's just another one here as well. All with these exquisite interiors. And there is the same engine that's in the V8 saloons as well. I think it is fiberglass because you wouldn't get that sort of um, deterioration if it was metal. Another oh, beige leather interior. This is a. It's actually a four speed. I thought it was a five speed for a second. Some people do fit later transmissions to these. 
So this will be about 62, this one. Tiny, tiny little stumpy gear lever. Sorry about the uh, plane overhead view, there's not a lot I could do about that kind of stuff, I'm afraid. Another one of these independent era or rather BSA ownership. Damon, this is a Conquest Drophead Coupe from 1955. That is beautiful. Thank you. We might as well make a start on this enormous row of uh, Triumph stuff here whilst, uh, we're, whilst we're going on here. 1978-79 TR7 with the... Uh, is there a Webasto roof on this? Of course, the uh, convertible didn't come out. I think it was late 79 the convertible came out. This is a much later car, though, than that. But these two are both probably right kind of on the uh, sort of end of TR7 and TR8 production. Because that finished in 1981. And these are 81, 82 registrations. Take a look at this one with the interior. There we go, sort of check interior. Kind of similar to the car used in the New Avengers, but it was a much earlier TR7, uh, driven by Joanna Lumley. which she used two of them, actually, both uh, yellow. Might have been a, you know, one relative British themselves actually with that. That one has um, plates from right and major commentary, so probably not that one, but this one perhaps. So this will be TR8 with the V8 engine as opposed to the 2 litre Triumph engine. 8081 registration. This is an early TR8 then. Um, 79 80 plate. Another X plate. All the five speed gearboxes. I often get very confused here is between because of the setup of uh, the Triumph Slant 4 engine, it, you can initially mistake it for a V8, but that's definitely not. That's definitely the 2 litre. This car, however, does have a V8, but it's not the same V8 as in the TR8. This is a Stag. I can't remember what this colour's called, I, for, I forget now, but it's a relatively early one, uh, 71, 72 registration. That's a really late um, TR. That's an 82, 83 plate, so way after production finished. But that was sort of way of those days, you know, they, um, they weren't a, a, at all sort of seen as desirable cars at the end. That's one of the reasons why they stopped making them, I think. It's a shame because they're pretty just horrible now. So another TR8. Earlier one here, it's a TR6 with the uh, Lucas, I think it's mechanical fuel injection on these. Um, it's on an L, so 72, 73. I wonder if there'll be loaded TR6s here today. Another TR8, um, this is a 1980. That's a fixed head coupe. It's loads and loads of TR7 and TR8. I mean, it's, it was more than I think I've ever seen together before. Excuse me. That one's a TR7, uh, 81, 82. Sorry. Yeah, so be 81 only. Another one of these stags. Another K Reg. 71, 72. Another one of the. Uh, TR7 V8 or TR8, if they use both names depending on kind of um, there's some sort of rallying, I think. I think the TR7 V8 was homologation of TR8 to a production one, so I might be totally wrong. Very, very early one on the 79 though, exported to California, re imported in 2019. That looks very special to you. The colour of that is just beautiful. TR4 1966, actually TR4A, this one with the independent rear suspension. Very nice viewers. Another one of the TR8s on a on a, you know, TR7 V8 it would be then. You see there they, they are both, there are both out there. You can see from this car because the V8 badges are on the wing. That's why you've got to be careful. 
So this is a more kind of standard look, looking one of these, a much earlier car. This is kind of more the, the kind of professional Strut New Avengers era of one of these. Because they had these in Return of the Saint, the professionals and the New Avengers, all as press cars. 7677 registration that one would be. 1969-70 Triumph Vitesse, sort of be a two litre in this one. Very similar to a Harold, but of course with the two litre um, straight six engine out of the Triumph 2000 in these. Oh, it's called Tessie. Hello, Tessie. This is a very special car. This is much earlier than most of the TR8s are. I think this is a some kind of development car. I've seen this actually at the NEC before. So that registration is an S, it's 7778. Um, and yes, I'm absolutely right for once. This is a, a prototype. Now we're on to the sort of Innsbruck facelift of the 2000 This is 2500 Mark II uh, with injection. So is, does that mean it's a, it's a PI? This is left-hand drive, so obviously a bit different from... Yeah, because they should say 2.5 PI, shouldn't they, if they're, if they're UK ones. Obviously, that's a left-hand drive, so it's a bit different. Another one of these, I think, TI. Oh, that's a nice colour, viewers. Oh, it's nice. Mmm. Yes. Most of the VIA ones were badge TR8, although they're, like that one over there, uh, there were some TR7 V8s as well. Very late um, pre-facelift. Triumph 2000 here, or is this just PI? I think it's just as normal 2000, so that'll be 69 only, I don't know, on an H. 1966 Triumph TR4A, again with the independent rear suspension. TR7 Sprint, now these are very rare. They, they made a sort of, I think about 100 um, TR7s with the 16 valve engine from the Dolomite Sprint, but most TR7s were an 8 valve version of the engine. I can't remember why they didn't make more of them. If this is one of the Grinnell um, TR7s, yeah, it says Grinnell cars on it, so number plates, it must be. Um, this is like a body kit type thing that's available. This is a yeah, Grinnell TR8. There's the uh, chassis number. BL cars, what they were called by that stage. But you can see the rear end is quite different. I can't remember what those rear lights are off. Um, answer the comments section below. So, yeah, 7980. Trump TR5. In this country, it's sold with um, the fuel injection system from the Triumph 2.5 PI. It's the last of the uh, Michelotti designed TRs. 1981 to 82 TR7. Helpfully put two litre badges on the wings to assist people like me when Shumbok is shuffling around shows. Another late TR7 here again, X 8081. 7980. This, I think, was the first year of the uh, convertible version which um, I think came out four years after they started making TR7s. 80, 81, like both of these. The steering was different in them, at least two for some reason, there we go. There we go, still got the uh, slot four in it, this one. Another one on an X8182. Must have changed the steering wheel about then, or maybe one car's had a later steering wheel put on it, I don't know. Triumph 2000 Innsbruck facelift one. 73.74. And that's what uh, engine one of those looks like.
more tribes, many more, lots more. This one's a dark green, which is a very nice colour. Another TR7 Sprint, again very rare. JW suggests this car might have been actually been registered by British Aid themselves, but uh, I didn't know that. So 77, 78 registration, this one. Another stag. We haven't seen too many stags. I'm expecting to see but far more of them actually at this uh, at this show. But we will um, we'll get round a lot of them, I'm sure, during the course of shambolic shuffling. 70, 73 registration. Another 77, 78 uh, TR7. Marginally different gear lever on this sort of earlier one. Another really, really late. TR7 on an 82-83 plate, so obviously not made what they've been. But someone's changed the gearbox in that for a different one. That's interesting. I wonder what gearbox that is. Don't know what year this one is. That's had a personal plate put on it. Yeah, gear lever ever so slightly different in the uh, later cars and the earlier ones. This has had a aftermarket wheel put on it. That's the old standard Triumph logo, that one. Again, a very late 180, 182 registration. TR8. One of the first four TR8 convertibles to roll off the Dutch Royal County in late 79. Right, so there you go, that's when they actually started making them, was late 79, although maybe by the time they registered them, it was, um, it was 1980. Another TR8. Oh, excuse me. That's really strange. Built in 1977, you had a pilot batch uh, production. Obviously, the one we've seen before um, was on, a, on an S. It must have been registered about the time they built them. Viewers. Mm, mm, mm. 1977 Triumph Dolomite 1500 HL. Someone's put some Sprint Alloy wheels on this, but to be honest, I like the Sprint Alloy wheel conversion. It makes the car look very nice. There was an 1850 HL, and then later there was a 1500 HL. This is an auto. I used to have a Dolomite 1500 SE. I, I, have, I have actually seen one. Um, which was at uh, the um, Retro Rides Weekender um, back in May. Um, but that was a special edition. The HL was just a more normal, higher tier one. 1981 Triumph TR8 EFI. That's interesting, viewers. 1971 to 2 Triumph 2000 Mark II. With. Um, Rather nice steering wheel. I really like the steering wheels on the sort of 70s Triumphs. They are very nice. It's Alfa Romeo seats now, like a 145 or something. 1980 to 81, TR7. 79 to 80, TR8. We've got another green. Donald Mike Sprint here, viewers. Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, um, 78, 79 registration. It is a different one from the other one because the only one's just over there. So I'm not seeing things, viewers. There are two of them here, and I'm very happy that they are here. 1970, 71, Stag. Um, this one, gosh, it's got a different gearbox in it from what I expected. I've not seen one like that before. Normally they um, they have uh, the overdrive switch if they're a manual. So this is a Spitfire, this is a Mark IV Spitfire. This will be the 1296 CC before we went to the uh, 1500 I think. Yeah, 72, 73 registration. That could have been owned by um, BL themselves actually, it's a DU cars often often were. 1976-77 Triumph TR7 with some rather natty 
I'll lay wheels off something. I'm not actually sure what those wheels are off, viewers. Answer the comment section below. 1967 to 68, Triumph Herald 1360. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Joseph. Are we going to be seeing your car video later on, my friend? Hopefully, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> nice to see you. I shall let you. I just stuffed my face with a sausage roll. You should have given that to your tiger. <laughs> Oh yeah, you go and see Garfield and my tiger. And yeah, we'll go see. Maybe if you were to have that such one in your hand, he'd come and sort of snatch it from you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's you, isn't it? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Right. Go and see the Allegro later on. Uh, Alex from Alex's Assets Channel. Um, looking very nice today, actually, uh, Allegro. Um, 4.6 litre V8. Yes, of course, you can just slot one of these in, can't you? It fit straight away. Um, Edelbrock Carburetta as well. Hmm. So, this would make it a TR V8. Excellent. Mark three Spitfire here, 1968 69 registration. With an overdrive gearbox. Excellent. Another TR7 Sprint, again on that same registration sequence as earlier on, the JW. Um, 70, 770F registration. Thirty years on and still in front, excellent. Early Triumph TR6 here. I think they were introduced about 69, and this is on the G, so it'd be a very early one in that case, 69 only. Uh, pre facelift Triumph 2000 or 2.5 PI. Actually, if it's 64, it'll definitely be a 2000 then. Unless someone swapped the engine over. No, 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 someone has swapped the engine over. It is a 2.5 PI, but it is um, on a 64 car, so that has had an engine swap. Another one of these TR7 sprints, again, on the same registration sequence. So I must be right then. These were owned by a sort of BL initially. That's the noise of this girl's slant forward. It makes its way off. There we go. Um, oh, viewers. I really want to drive a Dolomite Sprint. Anyway. Uh, ooh, another one of these. Uh, Triumph 2000. This is the Innsbruck facelift. 2.5 PI. Registered 15th December 1970. Very nice colour, viewers. Instrument panel, all those extra gauges. We like extra gauges, viewers. It makes me happy to see many, many extra gauges. Another one of these um, TR7 and TR8 with this sort of body kit on it. Um, again, a very late registration, um, 82, 83 registration, but of course, an 81 car. 1966 Triumph. 2000 this would be it's had a few modifications done to it the wheels are different so is that interior actually to be honest the seats look much more comfortable than standard so not really a problem um yeah the it's the pre um pre first face of actually because the face that came up for the 67 model year on the d would have had um rubber on the overriders 60 sorry 76 77 tr7 those are the original wheels, by the way, that you would have got um, back at the time. Imagine you get to the tyres of those, that's great. Another um, Innsbruck Triumph 2.5 PI, 72-73 registration. Again, another car that I would like to have a go in, very much yours. Very much yours. Another TR8, an early one, 79-80 um, registration. Later registration, 82, no, sorry, 81, 82, on a Coventry plate, so who knows if that was owned by Triumph originally. I don't know what this course is doing here, that's strange. Um, 1980 to 81, TR7, this is an automatic one. Wow, I don't think I've seen many of those, that's rare. And there we go, we, again, the old slot four engine here. Someone's using a timing gun, I think, to make sure it's running properly. A little timing gun thing, I think. At least I think it's a timing gun. 
Yes, <laughs> three TR7 sprints of the, of the same letter and number sequence. I think you can safely say that they were actually um, actually were ripped together. That's a standard TR7 though. It was the same sort of era as the one used in professional. That was on an R. So 7D, 6.7 registration. Right, we need to go to the back and see yet more Triumphs, I think. Excellent, more British engineering. Little Sinclair C5. Triumph 2500S, this was after the 2.5 PI proved to be a bit of a disaster. Um, quite a late one of these. They finished production in 77, and this is a 75 76 plate, so quite a late one. Why this says stag on the back, I don't know, but I think this is an, this is an estate of the sort of 2000, 2500 variety, and someone shoved the three litre V8 in it from the stag. I've never seen one of these like this before. And look at that dash, it's interesting. And that looks like the stag gearbox in it as well. Oh my gosh, it's a stag front end. <laughs> Was it just a standard? It was a standard one. Just the stag front end looks very similar. Uh, yeah, what that sort of life has, I don't know. But it's an Innsbruck facelift, so it's after 1959. The estates weren't actually made in house; they were made by car bodies um, of Coventry. Um, is this, a, is this one had a stag conversion as well. I suppose we'll find out, viewers. Maybe someone's put it on the back for me. Um, yeah, they call it a, st a stag. Um, it says Triumph Triumph, but it didn't really help me. Well, no, it's a late one, it says 74 75 registration. Another one of these uh, 2.5 PIs, uh, 72 73 plate on this one. Proud supporter of National Rust. Well, there, we've, well, there we go. Um, another really late one of these, it's um, an R, so. 7677, so one of the last of the shape, and again the 2500S, which was a, the attempt to kind of make up the, the problems the 2.5 PIs had. Oh, now that's, oh, that's very nice. Yes, this is a, a first facelift of the, um, the 2000. This is a 67, 68 registration with the official hubcaps. Look like that. Look how far in board those wheels are. Wow. Um, you can tell it's a, the first facelift one because it's got the um, rubber overriders and the 2000 badge there. We can take a look at the interior. This is very similar to the one that was used in an episode of um, The Avengers in 1968 uh, called They Keep Killing Steed, which was actually driven by Patrick McNee. Although the one that he drove was an auto, this is a manual. But yeah, that's a beautiful car. This one's just arrived. Another one of these uh, 2500s, this is the Innsbruck facelift. We'll go round this, uh, this Herald and we'll take a look at the back and see if we can find out what type this is. This is 2500 Mark II. Better not uh, annoy that chap on the rear parcel shaft because he will probably beat me up. He looks like Donkey Kong, but he's not, is he? Um, 1967 Triumph tw Herald 1200 Estate. We can take a look in here as well and see all the refineries of, that uh, Harold Motoring gave you at the time. Original kind of uh, sort of front end look of these as well. 1977 to 78, although it'll be a 77 this because they stopped making them in 77. Um, Triumph Stag, a very late one. Sea View car sales, well, that makes sense. It's in Bournemouth plate, so. Very much so. Um, oh, Vitesse. Vitesse. It's just convertible. Wow. Excellent. A, a rather late one. 68, 69 registration. XC. That um, she might have been registered um, by Triumph themselves originally. Oh, early Dolomite. It's a pre-75 one, so this will be this will be in 1850 because they weren't even badges 1850 HL before um, before the sort of 75 sort of big shake up of the range. So that's an early one. Very good, viewers. Thank you very much, 74. So I was right. Um, 
Another TR6, uh, this sort of lovely purple colour, 1973 to 74. Uh, ooh. Magenta, only 331 cars produced in this colour. With another dollar might sprint. It's quite an early one, it's an L, so. Uh, 72, 73, so I think the Stormlight Sprints came out in late 72 or late 73, so it's a very, it's a very early one of these. Mm. Oh, another one of these, uh, so this is, a, this is the um, pre-facelift type, again um, made in Coventry by, uh, by car bodies with the uh, rear panel work, or I think they just used the doors from the standard saloon. And we can take a look in there through the sunroof. Excellent. Hang on a second here, but that shouldn't be on an F. I think mean, this came out on like a G or an H, so I think that plate's been changed, unless someone's actually done a front and rear end conversion on it. I know, possibly. Uh, Spitfire, this one is, I think, a 1300 Spitfire. 7071 registration to ZTEC inside. So someone's actually dropped maybe a 1.6 or 2 litre ZTEC in that. So that probably is um, not a 1.3 anymore. Very early 2.5 PI here. <laughs> Very good registration. COV. I think these came out late 68, um, the Mark 1 2.5 PIs. Didn't make them very long at all. Um, so, another stag, ports of plate. This one's an automatic. 75, 76 registration. Oh, this, this thing's always here, isn't it? This um, Carmichael Fire Appliance, the render of a classic one. I wonder what year this is. It's an 88. It looks a lot older than that, though, doesn't it? It looks far older than that. It's even got the 3.9 litre from the contemporary uh, Range Rovers, so because they start to enlarge it about that time. So, yes, here we go. 2500S, late one, same sort of era, 75, 76. Mm. I do like that colour of yours. And here we have a uh, just standard 2000 on an XC, so maybe actually registered by BL themselves because XC was a very popular suffix for be able to register cars back in the day, um, such as the Range Rover used in the New Avengers, which is TXC 922J. Right, I think that's it for part two of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2022 BMC Leyland Show here at the British Motor Museum. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment below. And uh, we'll see you again soon for more extremely wonderful nostalgia.